Right. So, we live in America, land of the free, correct? Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are we actually free? Are we actually being watched constantly by the government? Are we under a secret oppression that we don't even know about? The answer is yes, we are. How many of you have an iPhone or a smartphone or something like that? Alrighty. So, when you update that iPhone or smartphone or whatever, you get a terms and conditions, you have to agree with it. Correct? You get one of those? Mm -hmm. How many of you actually read it? Yeah? Alrighty. So, if you've read it, you know that in the terms and conditions, there's an agreement in there that says, if you agree with this, the government can use your phone to track you whenever it so chooses. Apps, if you download an app and it has a terms and conditions, they can use that app if it has GPS to find you also. They have all of these ways to constantly know where you are. But that it doesn't just stop at cell phones. Landlines. I'm sure many of you have seen in movies when they wiretap the bad person's phone and they find they listen on and they're making a drug deal or something like that. It's real. They can wiretap your phones and they don't need a warrant to do it. They can do it whenever they so please. The Communications Assistance, Assistance for Law Enforcement Act requires that all cell phone companies and mobile and just landline companies make your phone easily wiretapped. They make it required that they can have an inline wiretap, or basically they just record all of your phone calls, or a microphone inserted into the phone. They require that that be good, that, that they have to do that. And they can also look at what you look at on the internet. So I'm sure all of you use Google, Yahoo, whatever, anything for Gmail, email sources, things like that. If you are signed into an email while you're on the internet, if the government so chooses, they can require that they give up all of your email information so that they can look through your emails as well as all of the IP addresses that you've gone to. They can, in theory, look at every single website that you have been, been on. So there has to be some decency, right? Some way that they can't see you. And you'd think that you'd be safe with a webcam. Well, you aren't. So once again, you all have smartphones. And on that smartphone, there is a front-facing camera. And on, the f on a lot of computers nowadays, they have built-in cameras. The government can use something called Gumfish. It is a software. And basically, it completely takes over any device they so choose. They can look in your camera roll. They can look at any photos you've taken. They can look on your Facebook if you have it on your phone. And they can hack into your webcam and turn it on and off remotely and take pictures of whatever they want. Not only that, they have something called captivated audience. They can hijack your phone microphone and listen to you having conversations with anyone, either if you're in a phone call or just conversing with a friend. So they can't, like, they can see us with the webcam, but they can't see me if I'm just walking on the street with the phone in my pocket, right? Uh, once again, no, definitely can see you. Drones. I'm sure many of you have heard about drones, all this good stuff about drones finding terrorist camps, killing Osama bin Laden, right? That was found with a drone. There are drones over America. Drones is capable of watching 15 square miles of land from an altitude of 17,500 feet. And the resolution of the camera is capable of identifying the brand of clothing you're wearing. If you're wearing a sweatshirt that has a big Under Armour logo on it, they can see that it is Under Armour. So where did this all start? Why do they feel the constant need to be watching us? What did we do? And the next slide is not meant to offend anybody, but it goes directly back to 9-11. And I'm sure many of you have heard about the Patriot Act, the law enforced by George Bush. It passed the Senate 98 to 1. I mean, it was completely blew right through the Senate. There was no issue. So what does the Patriot Act really do? Well, first we need to look at what is a terrorist. So we have organizational terrorism, so terrorists that work for an organization, and lone wolf terrorism. Lone wolf terrorism is basically anyone the government considers to be acting out against the government. That's, that really is what a lone wolf terrorist is. 
And so this act, by saying, we have the right to intercept wire, oral, and electronic communications relating to terrorism, computer fraud, and abuse offenses, makes it completely legal for them to look at what you're doing. So, I mean, it's, it's really awesome how all this stuff came out, and I'm sure many of you have heard of the guy who did it all, Edward Snowden, but let's talk about the place that's doing it all. So, there is a place called the National Security Agency. So, you'd think that they'd be protecting our security, protecting our rights, but they're not. They are the ones behind all of this. They intercepted billions of phone calls of Americans and kept that hidden from all of us. None of us knew what was going on with the National Security Agency. They were formed in 1952 after World War II, and their estimated budget is about $10.8 billion. That's a hefty amount of change right there. And they are capable of boomerang routing, basically taking any routing, passing it through there, and sending it back to the person. That way they can see what you're doing. They can hardware impl like implant things. If they like get a shipment of routers, things like that, implant something in the router, then they can keep track of all of that stuff. As well as warrantless wiretaps. All of this stuff has been completely legal and supported by Barack Obama and George Bush. So let me just show you the man who leaked all of this information, the man who brought all of this to the light. Edward Snowden. So, this man never graduated from high school. He received his GED after his sophomore year. And then he actually went to a community college, very young for community college. And he only received an associate's degree. He quickly picked up a job with the CIA and worked his way up the ranks. He became the full administrator of the NSA. He had unlimited access to everything the NSA was doing. Eventually, he got, you got fed up with all of this spying, all this hidden things that we were hiding from us. And he went to Hong Kong, exposed it all, and now he's no longer allowed in America. He now has a, an as, asylum in Russia. He's living there and doesn't know what to do after it expires. Um, so, now it really comes down to you. Do you think we're free? I don't know. I don't know what you think of all of this information. Are you going to take your smartphones and throw them in the garbage? Probably not. That's a lot of money. It's all up to you now.